To illustrate uh, the importance of scale effect in fluid mechanics, I'd like to tell you a cautionary tale, the tale of Howard Hughes. And to illustrate this, I'd like to ask you the question, when was the second largest airplane in the world built? The largest airplane in the world is called the Strata Launch. It first flew in 2019. Uh, but the largest airplane in the world before that, uh, when was it built? And the answer is surprising. It is 1947. Hmm? Very old. And we're talking here about the H4 Spruce Goose. Uh, this is a transport airplane made out of wood. Uh, first flew in 1947. Um, then the largest airplane in the world and would remain so for 50 years. Uh, H4 was a very large machine. It was only a hydroplane, didn't have wheels, so only able to float on water. And you can have a feel for how large the airplane was by looking at this aerial picture where you can see humans here uh, standing on the side next to the to immense uh, airplane over here. Uh, this here is the plan view of the Airbus 380, which is the largest passenger airplane you can fly in today. Um, this is typically what you would fly in when you fly across the Atlantic or the Pacific with a relatively large airline, and what you would fly flying today. And superimposed into this is the Spruce Goose, which is larger. Yeah, Spruce Goose 1947 is almost 100 meters wide uh, in length. So what happened to this airplane? Why was it not so much more successful? Uh, why does nobody talk about this airplane? Well, this is the story. The Spruce Goose, the H4 Spruce Goose, it flew only one time. And then when it flew, it could not fly very high up. It remained at 20 meters altitude. It was not able to climb. Why? Because Howard Hughes did not study this chapter. No. So what happened here? To understand what happened, uh, you have to look at scale effects. Howard Hughes had a set of airplane design plans for an airplane that worked very well. And he tried to scale those up. So he tried to make an airplane that was about three times larger than anything else uh, flying at the time. And so he tried to increase the length, um, typical representative length of the airplane, L, from one to a factor for about three. And as you grow the airplane in width, you also grow it in length and you also grow it in height so that uh, the area of the wing of the airplane grows faster than the length. Um, and so if you increase the length by a factor three, then the area will grow by a factor nine. And the weight, which is proportional to the cube of the airplane, uh, will grow by a factor which is about 30. Yeah. So the larger your airplane, uh, the heavier it becomes, and but it becomes heavier in an exponential manner. So let's take a look now at the fluid mechanics of this. Um, if you say that you reproduce the same flow parameters across the airplane, so you, re you manage somehow to have the same flow pattern, uh, having the same shape of the airplane, then the flow coefficients will remain the same. And the flow, remain, flow coefficients remain the same. You can quantify the force on a new airplane B uh, compared to the force on the new airplane A using this, um, this relationship here, those factors here. And if you rearrange this term to quantify the velocity at which you need to fly, VB divided by VA. So the new velocity at which you need to fly compared to the old velocity. Yeah. Then you see that it increases with this factor here, which to the square root over there. And now what we try to do here is to replace um, first the area, S, by the square of the length, yeah, because area grows together with the square of the length. And then we're going to replace the force, which is the lift of the airplane that you need to apply. So it is equal to the weight of the airplane. This force grows together with the weight, and the weight grows together with a cube of length. So once you put the lengths into, the, into this, this equation here, this is the area and this is the, um, the weight, you put here the length of the airplane squared, so the ratio of the length squared, and here is again the ratio of the length cube. And these cancel out together so that you get the relationship that says that the velocity ratio, so the ratio of the new velocity to the old velocity, is proportional to the ratio of the new length to the old length to the power one half yes so velocity grows together with a square root of length all right this is not too bad let's plot it if you plot it you see this as you grow the length from factor one to say factor three then the v flight the velocity 
at which you need to push the airplane so that it will fly. This velocity, when you have tripled the size, it has grown by about 70%. Okay? So this is okay until you look at power. Let's take a look at power. To quantify power, we again use coefficients. And the flow, um, sorry, the power coefficient uh, is equal, it remains the same because you have maintained the flow coefficient more or less um, when you design the airplane. Uh, then you can quantify the new power that you need with respect to, um, with in relationship to the old power. And in between stands this term here. So let's take a look again. The area, the ratios of area, grows with the ratios of length squared. And the ratios of velocities grows um, with the length to the power one half. So if you replace those terms here um, with lengths, then you get this relationship. Power, uh, the ratio of new to old power, grows with the ratio of new to old length squared multiplied by the ratio of new to length new to old length cube to the power one half. So that in you have now the power grows with length to the power two plus three halves, which is three and a half. Power grows with the power three and a half of length. Let's take a look now at a plot of that. We grow here the length from factor one to let's say factor three. And in blue here is the curve that we had previously for speed. This is the square root of that. And we said uh, triple the length and you have to increase the velocity by about 70% down here. But power doesn't increase with the square root of length. It increases with about three and a half. And so you can see that if you increase power by a factor th uh, length by a factor three, you have to increase power by a factor that's close to 30. So you need vast amount of power to move a large airplane, not amounts of energy. Um, airplanes are very efficient. And as you scale airplanes up and down, they remain as efficient. So you don't need a lot of energy to move the airplane from A to B, but you need a lot of power. You need to expand this energy at a rate that increases very strongly with the length. Yes. So you arrive with this airplane, uh, which was well designed, very nicely drawn and beautiful and Everything was nice, except for the power. And this airplane was tremendously underpowered. Because as you grow the length, you, by a factor three, yes, you need to increase the power by a factor close to 30. And just adding more engine, more propeller engines on the wings uh, would not work. And what this airplane really needed was a type of engine which would come uh, about 10 years later, which is the jet engine. And this would have saved uh, the airplane. But by the time, it was too late. So this is the lesson to learn here. Uh, before you spend all your money uh, designing a gigantic machine, and before you embarrass yourself calling the press and flying helicopters to take pictures of your brand new machine, figure out what the scale effects are uh, of the fluid flow around your machine.